Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today I want to talk about hold downs and the different things that I found out. So there's a bunch of different ways to hold this down on your CNC. You can use you can use some of these. These are made by Rockler. And you can basically put them on each side and maybe put one. If you had it in the middle right there, you can put you can put them on all, all four sides like that. The only problem with these on a CNC, if you make a mistake and you hit the top of this with your bit, or if it's traveling across and you and you should hit one of these, you're gonna ruin you're gonna ruin your bit for sure. Um, so, but these are a good option, and as long as you know how to the travel of your uh, of your uh, bit, and you make sure and check the G code, you can use that. Another way that I found was just to use some blocks, and basically you're not really worried about the bit hitting them with these wood blocks. You can, you know, but then you're screwing these into your table, and um, eventually it kind of tears up your table. The other way that I've the other way that I've done it is I've actually shot nails. Now I wouldn't want to shoot nails in this, but if I had a board that I was going to cut out, I could shoot the four corners with these little plastic nails. And these are made by Raptor. And that's that was pretty easy. You put it, put it on there, make sure it's square with your machine and just shoot it down. It's really quick. So that that's a good option. Um, when you're doing these nice cutting boards though, you're not going to be able to shoot that plastic nail through walnut or maple. The other way that I've done, and I did this the other day, is I used this 3M double-sided tape. And actually that worked really well. Um, the only problem is this stuff's not cheap, and, and if you, like me, I like to do a project almost every day, so um, yeah, I don't know how long that would last me. But it does work really well. I actually had trouble getting them. It was a cutting board like this, and I had trouble getting it off the table. Um, so that's a good option too. Now the the other thing is, the other thing I decided to do was I decided to try out these auto lock T track clamps, and um, we're going to go ahead and do an opening. What I did was I got two of these, and then I also got two of these cam clamps. And what the idea of this is, I want to. I have to. I have to surface this first. I'll run it through the planer, but then I have to. Um, I have to do a V carve design in it, and then I. And then I. I'm going to do epoxy inlay, and then I'm going to have to surface it. And the best way I found to do that is on the CNC, but I don't want to be traveling my big surfacing bit across. And, and you know hit one of these clamps so that's why that's not really a good option for me the tape works really well for this but I wanted to try another option so today we're going to review these cam clamps and the way they work loosen these up basically you slide them into your t-track And you could have you can have multiple depending on how your cheat track's set up. So we'll put one of these. Put one of these on each side. And then basically you crank that down. And now here's the cam. And basically this thing, so that's loose, so you basically slide it up there. We'll put our other one on this side. And then we'll tighten it down. That's still a little bit loose, but 
Now, my idea was to do, use these two and then also use also use this. And this is an auto lock T track clamp. So we'll put one of these in. We'll put one on each side. Just slide in, tighten down this blue nut. Now you would want to have one on each side. Pretty tight. I don't think it would move. So that's a different. That's another option. Um, however, because of the height of these to my to this cutting board, I don't think I'm going to run these because they have a chance of getting hit by the by the cutter blade when it goes across. But these are, these are really nice, they do hold really well, and I see myself using them a lot. Anyway, those are your different options for hold downs, and I've had good luck with, with all of them, actually, in different situations. Um, that's one thing you really don't want, is you don't want your material to come loose. And that's why I invested some money in these, so that I could... Um, my particular CNC, I have tracks every eight inches so I could easily have, have two of these over here and two of these over here and clamp something down pretty easy. And I might try that out when I do my, uh, actually I'll try it out when I do my uh, 3D V-car and the juice tray. So we will try these out today and I'll give you a review afterwards. Okay, let's get started. First thing I do is measure the material. Okay, once we got all our measurements, we come over here and create a new file. And let's see, our width is 16 and 5 eighths. 16 inches, 5 eighths. So we are going to be 16, 16.625. And then our height is 12 and 3 quarters, so 12.75. And our thickness which is one of the most important probably. Our thickness is 1.6580. And we're gonna go from the material surface, XY datum, left-hand corner, standard, hit okay. Now we're gonna import the same, because I, because I made a mistake on one of my previous projects, um, where the material actually came loose on the table and it ended up scratching, putting a groove in. I'm going to do this one of the same projects again so I can see if I can um, do a better job this time. So what I'm looking for... Oh, wait a minute, cancel that. We're going to import a bitmap. And it's right there. And we'll open that. Okay, I've done this quite a few times, so I'm gonna, but I'll go ahead and show it again. So once we upload the bitmap right here, we go over to this little bird and hit that. Now it's a, black and white's what I want, so it's already on black and white. We'll leave all of this stuff the same and preview and hit apply. Now what I'm going to do is close that and I'm going to delete the picture, leave the bitmaps there. Now the first thing I need to do is un undo ungroup them and basically 
what I want to do is go get rid of all this stuff that I don't need. And these images are easy to find. Actually, what I do is I type in um, tribal art and they really have good good stuff in there. Now you can see a zoom in and I don't need this little square here, so get rid of that. And I believe that was the only thing on this thing. Okay, so that's looking good. Now what I want to do is I want to regroup it, group the object back together, and now we're going to go for size. And I kind of want to do this one a little bigger than normal, so I'm going to hold the shift key down, grab this little node right here, and then I'm going to go over to my centering tool and put them in the center. He looks pretty good. Okay. All right. I'm not going to, let's get right to it. So it's already highlighted. We know our, we've got our set material depth. So all that's good. We'll go ahead and hit V carve. We're not using a clearance tool. We're using a V bit number 1502. I'll show you a picture right here. And all that's going to stay the same. We'll go ahead and write down our, our bit 1502 and hit calculate and then I like to always preview it and there he is and he's a lot bigger than before but I that's what I want to do I want to do something really interesting Okay, what are my thoughts on the Rockler T-Track clamps? They actually held really good. And I didn't see any movement in the piece. Um, and now it's ready for, we're gonna do an epoxy inlay in this. But I thought these were really good. I actually, uh, believe it or not, I like the little cam locks better. Um, the reason being, when you slide them on here, you, you basically, you're able to just tighten this up really tight. And, and it's not going anywhere, where as these, you, you're trying to tighten this plastic knob. And this one, felt, one of them felt tighter than the other one. And I think it has something to do with this, uh, yeah, this little screw on the inside. That's how you adjust it to have it get, to have it go tighter. But yeah, I'd have to give both of these a thumbs up. I, I, I prefer these little cam locks, so I think I might get some more of these cam locks. Um, they basically, that's, lo that's loose and then that's tight. So you, you're able to really, and it has a nice little grip on it. Um, yeah, they worked good. Anyway, uh, I give a thumbs up to the Rockler T-Track system. And um, yeah, let's get started. Let's, we're, we're gonna continue with this video and finish this uh, cutting board. And yeah, let's get started. First thing I do is mix up some super clear and I, I'm kind of running out of dyes. I ordered some more dyes from Black. Uh, I'll put a picture right here. 
but um, I'm kind of having to be creative with some of these colors, but we ended up able to do a green one again. It's a little lighter green, but uh, it, it turned out to be a really translucent color, and I think it's going to turn out really good. Anyway, I mixed that up for about five minutes and make sure to scrape the sides. The room temperature is very important too. I have the room temperature at about 70. I have my pellet stove going and it's about 70 in the shop right now. And I mix that up and pour it in and then we'll wait till it dries to clean it up. The next day I turn on my dust right dust collector. I get out my Makita orbital sander and I was going to plane the top of this epoxy off but I noticed that there was a few little details in the, in the face of the deer that it would be hard to keep from, uh, if I planed too deep, if I surfaced it with the CNC and it went just a little too deep, it would get rid of those details. So I decided to hand sand this off and it took a few minutes, but it actually turned out a lot better. After I got all the epoxy off, I sanded the whole thing with uh, 200, 300, 400, and 600. And I really, uh, you could really see the detail in the deer in the inlay. After that, I took it over to the CNC machine. And here we're gonna use the Rockler clamps again. I was really happy with how they worked and they were really easy to set up. So right here, I'm gonna measure the dimensions, make sure I got them really accurate, measure the thickness with a caliper and then I'm going to mount this thing in here. And right here we're going to um, we're going to router out the juice catcher on this cutting board. And it's a simple little program. Uh, basically it's just going to take one pass around this around this cutting board. I did realize that the screws that they have there you basically loosen them all the way up and that and that ends up being tighter. If you screw them down it's a, it's a looser fit. So right here I'm putting in the 1404. Uh, it's a ball nose bit for doing this particular application and I'll show you a picture of the bit. Right here, right here I'm running the program. And the Rockler clamps, they did not move at all. So this is working out really good. This will be, um, this will be a big help to me. And right here I router a little quarter round around the whole top and around the whole bottom. Here's another look. Look at this deer looking in the window right there. I opened the door to see if he was just going to come in. And uh, he's just sitting out there wondering what I was doing. Anyway, that's life in the mountains. Anyway, I proceed to sand this thing up, get it really clean, and put walrus oil on it, and there it is, all in its glory. And this has been my most successful cutting board so far, as far as the, using the CNC machine, and it really turned out beautiful. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you next time. Later.